Hello there and welcome to the video on curved distance and velocity time graphs. Uh, we've seen distance time graphs, we've seen velocity time graphs, all with straight lines on them. Let's now see how we deal with questions where the distance and velocity time graph is curvy. So just a recap of what we've seen so far. In a distance time graph, the gradient is the same as the velocity. And in a velocity time graph, the gradient is the acceleration, and the area under the graph is the same as the distance travelled. A few useful formulas to remember is that we can calculate speed, or the gradient, by difference in distance divided by difference in time. We can calculate acceleration by doing difference in speed divided by difference in time. These both, the same as basically gradient, is change in y divided by change in x. It's exactly the same thing. Calculate the gradient by doing this small calculation here. That would be the same as distance divided by time and speed divided by time. An area under graph is the same as distance travelled. Now you might have to split your graph into rectangles, triangles, or in some cases trapezium. So it's just helpful to have at hand the area of a trapezium formula. And if you've got a trapezium that looks like this, then it's A plus B divided by 2 times by H. And actually H is usually the height of the trapezium, but H here is actually the width of the bar. OK, let's get stuck into uh, just a few questions recapping what we've done previously. Can you just pause the video and have a go at this recap question? OK, so to calculate the speed of the three different sections, so the first section is this section here from 5 up to 10 and from 0 to 3 on the time. So to work out the speed, we work out the gradient of this um, part of the graph. It's going left, so it's going right by 3 and up by 5. So in this case the gradient, the difference in y divided by the difference in x, or in this case here the difference in the distance divided by the difference in the time, is 5, it's changed the distance of 5, divided by a change in time of 3, so that would be 1.67 meters per second. OK, let's recap question number one. So that's how do we find the uh, how do we find the speed on a distance time graph? We find the distance, we find the speed on a distance time graph by working out what the gradient is. And it's the difference in y divided by the difference in x. For the second section of the graph, we have a flat line. And on a distance time graph, a flat line represents no speed. The dif distance from a fixed point has not changed, so the speed is zero. So the speed of section one is this, speed of section two is zero, and the speed of section three will be coming backwards, but that's still going to involve some speed. The difference in x is going to, so the difference in y is going to be from 10 to zero, so that's 10, and from 7 to 12, that's going to be 5. So 10 divided by 5 is 2 meters per second. OK, let's move on to recap question number 2. Pause the video and give this one a go. OK, so in this question here, we're calculating the acceleration of the graph. So in the first section, we're having it to decrease our speed from 4 to 1. Um, so that's a difference in 3. Or actually, it's going to go down by 3, so it's minus 3. And the difference in x is 4. So the acceleration here is going to be the difference in y divided by the difference in x. Or in this case, it's going to be difference in velocity divided by difference in time. So the difference in the velocity is going to be minus 3. Now, when we're dealing with acceleration, it's really important we make a distinction between whether the graph's going down or whether the graph's going up at that point in time. And when it's going down, we refer to the change in the velocity as decreasing by 3. And the time is just increasing by 4. Time is also always increasing. It's never going backwards in time. So the bottom is always positive. So in this case here, it's minus 0.75 metres per second squared. Notice how we didn't have to do this for the distance time graph question, because it would just mean that we're travelling in the opposite direction. For part B, the acceleration is zero. B 
be. We know it's going to be zero because the velocity is not changing, or the gradient is zero on this graph. And for the third section, the difference in y is going from one up to nine, that's a difference increasing by eight, and then from seven to 12, that's an increase by five. So we do difference in y divided by difference in x, the graph is going from 1 up to 9, that's an increase of 8, and an increase from five, 7 to 12, that's an increase of 5, so 1.6 metres per second squared is the answer to the last part. So these are the three answers to these questions. And let's move on to the final recap question. This question here is asking you to calculate the distance travelled in this graph here. OK, so let's have a look at the shapes that we can divide this graph into. We've got one trapezium for section A. We've got a rectangle for section B and then another trapezium for section C. So the area of a trapezium formula is, remember, A plus B divided by 2 times by H. So for section A, side A is going to be 4 plus side B, which is a length of 1, divided by 2 times by the height, and that's actually going to be the width of this bar, which is 4. So that's going to be 5 over 2, that's 2.5 times 4, that's going to be 10 metres. So in the first 4 seconds, this particle or this object has travelled 10 metres. In section B, it's a rectangle, and rectangle is just base times width, so that's 1 times 3, which is 3 metres. And section C has a height of, so that's another trapezium, so that's going to be A is 1 on this side, B is going to be 9 on this side. Divide that by 2 times by uh, the height. In this case, it is 5. So 5 times 5 is 25 metres. Add all three of those results together, and you get 38 metres travelled in total. OK, so let's get on to the curvy part of this uh, video then. So what happens if the diagram looks like this? In this question here, we have a distance time graph, and we are seeing that the distance is slowly changing to start with, but then it's changing quite fast later on. In this graph, the graph is travelling quite slowly to start with, or the, the object is travelling quite slowly to start with, and then it's getting further and further away and more quicker, so therefore the speed is increasing as this graph goes on. So what we're asked to find is calculate the speed at time t equals 6, or that's when the time is 6 seconds. Now what we're going to do here is what's called drawing a tangent. And a tangent is a straight line that just touches the graph and then will extend off in either direction. So you can see here it's just gently touching the graph at point 6 and then will extend off to the left and the right hand side in a straight line. So what we'll do is we'll draw that tangent line onto the graph with a ruler and then we will calculate the gradient of this tangent. So we'll use the furthest points on the tangent to work this out. So we're going to be doing here difference in y divided by difference in x. The difference in y here, let's try and be quite accurate if we can, that's going to be about 3.7. That's 3.7 to here down to 0. And then the difference in the time is going to be from 3.5 up to 10. That's going to be divided by 6.5. So now grab a calculator, 3.7 divided by 6.5. That will equal 0.57 roughly to, and that's meters per second. So let's just recap that bit then. So you take the graph at the point 6, you draw a tangent, and then you work out the gradient of that tangent. That's the difference in y divided by the difference in x. In this case, it was 3.7 high and 6.5 wide. So you do 3.7 divided by 6.5 to get your speed, which is about 0.57 metres per second. Try and be as accurate as you can. Always try and go to at least one decimal place in this calculation. OK, your turn to have a go at uh, practising this one here. So you take the same graph, 
Uh, if you want to, in the description of the video, there are some graphs just like these ones that I'm going to now be working with. So you can print them off if you want to, or you can just draw yourself a sketch and calculate the speed at t equals 10. Pause the video and work this one out. Okay, so the first thing we need to do then is grab a ruler and draw a tangent at time t equals 10. So that's just touching the point where the graph is at 10. And now we're going to do a difference in y divided by difference in x calculation. It looks like this point here is about 0 0.6 and it goes up to about 8.4. So let's do 8.4 minus 0 0.6 to work out the difference and that is 7.8. So the difference here is 7.8. And the difference in x is going to be, well, that's about 6.8 to 12. So that would be about 5.2. So we now do difference in y divided by difference in x. So that would be 7.8 divided by 5.2. And you grab your calculator and you do that calculation 7.8 divided by 5.2 and you get an answer of 1.5 meters per second exactly. So there we are. Now what we're working out here is an approximation for what the gradient is when t equals 10. This is not the exact answer because we've just drawn the just drawn the tangent with a ruler and our kind of best guess at the tangent line. It's not an exact answer, but it's a very good estimate for what the actual answer is. Let's move on to have another go at a question very similar to this different graph now. Pause the video and work out the speed when t equals 5. Okay, so grab your graph and draw a tangent at 5. So that will look like this line here. So we can see here the line is meeting the graph at t equals 5. And now let's draw, a, draw some lines to work out the gradient. So this is going to be the triangle we'll need to use. Let's work out the difference in y first. That looks like it's going up to about 9.8 and down to about 5.4. So if we now work out the difference in the y-axis, that's 9.8, take away 5.4, that's going to be 4.4. So it looks like the height of this line here is 4.4. And on the y-axis, it looks like it's going from about 0 0.9 to about 11.1. .1. So 11.1 .1 minus 0 0.9 is about 10.2. So now we'll do a calculation of difference in y divided by difference in x. And that's going to be 4.4 divided by 10.2. So let's do that division. 4.4 divided by 10.2. 10.2. And that gives us about 0.43 to two significant figures. So there we are. That's the answer to that question. OK, let's have one more go at finding the speed. Find the speed here when t equals 5 for this graph. OK, so what we need to do for this question here is draw a tangent. So draw a straight line that will just touch the graph when t equals 5. And now let's draw ourselves a little triangle to help us work out the gradient. The gradient on the y-axis looks like it's starting from about 2.3 and going up to about 6.1. So the difference between 6.1 and 2.3 is 3.8. So the difference in y is 3.8. The difference in x is going to be from about 2.6 up to about... 7.6, so that would be a 5 as a difference on the y-x-axis. So to calculate the speed, we now do difference in y divided by difference in x, and that's going to be 3.8 divided by 5. You always do the um, y-axis 1 divided by the x1, so 3.8 divided by 5, 
so 3.8, whoops, divided by 5 is 0 0.76. 0 0.76 meters per second. Let's move on to question four then. So a little bit of a problem solving one here. At what times is the car stationary? Pause the video and give this one some thought and an answer. Okay, so on a distance time graph, the car, in this case, is going to be stationary when the gradient is flat or when the graph is not either increasing nor decreasing. And that happens at two points in time. It happens at this point in time when the graph is flat and it happens at this point in time when the graph is flat. So I would say it's when t equals 3.5 seconds or when it's about 6.3. T so 8.3 seconds. So, a, so on a distance time graph, if an object is stationary, it means the gradient is flat at those points. Okay, so let's go back to our recap then. On distance time graphs, we've got gradient is the same as velocity, and that's still the same case. But when the graph is curvy, draw a tangent onto the graph at that point, and then work out its gradient. And actually, that's going to be exactly the same for velocity time graphs as well. If you want to work out the acceleration, you should do you should draw a tangent and then work out its gradients. Let's see a few questions in action. OK, then, so it's the same technique as we used before. Have a go at this question. Uh, find the acceleration when t equals 4. OK, so let's see what we need to do then. So grab yourself a ruler and a pencil and draw yourself in a tangent. So let's now draw the triangle onto this tangent and work out its gradient. Now, in this case, the, the acceleration is going downwards, uh, so it's decelerating. The velocity is getting slower, so that means that the acceleration is going to be minus 3.5 divided by 7.5. That looks like the uh, dimensions on this triangle. So the difference in y divided by the difference in x is going to be minus 3.5 divided by 7.5. So grab yourself a calculator and do minus 3.5 divided by 7.5 equals, that would be minus 0.47 to, to two significant figures meters per second squared and it's minus in this case because it's going downward sloping the acceleration is negative you could say that the deceleration is 0.47 meters per second squared okay let's move on to uh, question six then give yourself another chance to practice this one pause the video and work out the acceleration at t equals five on this graph Okay, so first thing you need to do, grab yourself a ruler, grab yourself a pencil, draw in a tangent. The tangent needs to be a line, straight line, that touches the point at t equals 5. So let's just draw ourselves in some difference in y divided by difference in x lines. This looks like it's going from, um, if we'd use this point over here, roughly about 6.7 up to about 9.7. So that would be a difference of 3 here. So when we do difference in y divided by difference in x, it's going to be 3, uh, so minus 3 because it's going downwards, so minus 3 divided by, that's going from 1 up to about 10.2, so that's going to be divided by 9.2. So minus 3 divided by 9.2 and that gives us minus 0.33 to two significant figures. No, minus 0.33, that would be meters per second squared. And we know it needs to be negative because it's going downward sloping. Let's have a go at one more of this type of question. Calculates the acceleration when t equals 10.
Okay, so same as before, grab yourself a ruler, grab yourself a pencil, draw yourself in a tangent. So let's draw in though that triangle to work out the gradient. So it looks like the height of this triangle is going to be about 7.8. Uh, let's just say that it's touching the bottom there. And it's going from about 7.7 .7 to about 7.7 .7 to about 11.3, so let's work out the difference between those two numbers, let's do a subtraction, and the subtraction there is going to be 3.6. So the difference in y divided by the difference in x is going downward sloping, so it needs to be minus 7.8 divided by 3.6, and let's grab a calculator and do that division, minus 7.8 divided by 3.6, is minus 2.2 .2 meters per second squared to two significant figures. So there we are, that's how we calculate the acceleration on a velocity time graph. So when we have tan when we have curvy graphs, you just draw in tangents and then work out the gradients of those tangents. But what do we do when we want to work out the area under the graph to calculate the distance traveled? Well, essentially, nothing's changed here. We still need to work out this area under the curve here to work out the distance travelled. But as you can see here, it's a very irregular shape that doesn't lend itself very well to breaking it down into separate sections to use different mathematical formulas to work out. One way of doing it would be to count the squares, but when the graph gets very big, that would be very long to do it that way. One way of doing it mathematically would be to describe the shape as like a triangle. But again here, this would not be a very good way of doing it because there's lots of white space here between the actual distance covered and the triangle that we're approximating this shape with. Maybe we divide it up into two separate shapes, like a trapezium and a triangle. But again, there's still lots of white space here uh, between the actual distance covered and the two shapes we've divided this shape into. Three shapes would give us a better approximation, and four shapes would give us a better approximation still. In this case, we've divided the 12 seconds into three second intervals, four lots of them, and then made some trapeziums and a triangle on the end to work out this total area. But no matter how small we make these trapeziums, it's going to give us a more accurate answer, but it's always going to be only an estimate. So when it says calculate the distance travelled, you're actually only going to be answering an estimate, answering with an estimate to this area. Now we could go all the way down to, to 6 trapeziums, to 12 trapeziums, to an infinite amount of trapeziums, and that would give us a more accurate answer. But we're going to say for this video and for the questions that we're going to do, between 4 and 6 different shapes would be an appropriate amount of trapeziums to break our, to break our diagram down into. So let's get on it then. So what we need is the formula for the area of a trapezium. So what we're going to do is going to divide the shape up into roughly four different trapeziums and then work out, roughly spelt correctly, uh, work out the areas of the trapeziums and add them together. So we'll call this area A, area B, area C and area D. So for the first one, the area of the trapezium is going to be 9 plus now what's this approximately? Approximately 8.7 divided by 2 times by the height, that's actually the width of the bar, that's 3. So grab a calculator, it's going to be 9 plus 8.7 equals divide by 2 times by 3, and the distance here is going to be 26.55. So section A is 26.55, section B is going to be 8.7, Add the height on the right hand bar is going to be about 8.2. Divide that by 2 and times by 3. We divide by 2 because that's what you do in the formula for the area of a trapezium, and we're times in by 3 because that's the width of the bar in this case. So on the calculator, 8.7 add 8.2. Divide by 2 times by 3, and we get an answer of 25.35. For section C, we're going to do something very similar. Again, it's a trapezium, height of 8.2 on the left-hand side, and then height of about 5.7 on the right-hand side. 
divide by 2 times by 3. So grab the calculator again, 8.2, add 5.7, divide that by 2 times by 3, and that will give us uh, 20.85. And section D is going to be a triangle, so that's base times height divided by 2. The height of this triangle is about 5.7 times by the width of the bar, which is 3, divided by 2. That's a triangle formula we've used there. 5.7 times 3 divided by 2 equals 8.55. Now to get the total distance travelled, we'll just add all of these numbers together. So it's 26.55, add 25.35, add 20.85, add 8.55, and that gives us 81.3 metres travelled for this graph. 81.3 is the answer for the distance travelled, and it's an approximate answer. And it's definitely going to be an under approximation because the actual graph is actually going to be bigger than the approximation we've found because there's some white space between our trapeziums and the actual graph where the graph is bigger than our trapezium areas. Okay, that's the example. Your turn to have a go at a question of your own. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so let's get started in this question then. So first of all, we have a triangle. Next of all, we have a, another trapezium. Then a, another trapezium. And then another trapezium. It looks like this answer is going to be an over-approximation because you can see the lines of my trapezium are going over the actual graph that we want to work out the distance of or the area underneath of. So let's go for triangle number one. So the area of the triangle, let's read the graph, that looks to be about 0 0.5, that's the height times the base of 3 divided by 2, that's the formula of the area of a triangle, base times height divided by 2, so 0 0.5 times 3, divide that by 2, and we get 3 quarters, or 0 0.75 metres. For the second section, that's the area of a trapezium, so trapezium 1, uh, that has a height of 0 0.5 on the left, and the height on the right is about 1.5. Divide that by 2, and then times by 3. And that's going to be 2, divided by 2 is 1, times 3, that's 3 metres. For the third section, trapezium 2, the height on the left-hand side is going to be about 1.5. The height on the right-hand side looks like it's 4. Divide that by 2 and then times by 3, so add this together, 1.5, add 4, divide by 2, times by 3, and we get 8.25 metres. And then in the last section, that's trapezium 3, that's going to be a height on the left-hand side of 4, add a height on the right-hand side of 10, over 2, times by 3, so that's going to be 14 divided by 2 is 7, times 3 is 21 metres. So therefore, the answer to this question, the total distance travelled, total distance, is just the sum of all of these four shapes. So that's going to be 0 0.75 add 8.25, let's group those two together, because that'll make 9, uh, add the 21, that makes 30, 33 metres in total, and we add those four numbers together. So there we are, that's how we do these kinds of questions where we're looking to work out the area under a curved graph. We split them into trapeziums, work out the area of those trapeziums. And as I said right at the start, this is an overestimate of the actual answer. We know it's an overestimate because the lines of the trapeziums are going over the actual blue curved line. Okay, so now it's your turn to practice some questions, developing the skills that we've seen in this video. So what you can either do is zoom out of this video, and in the description is a link to a worksheet of six questions, and we'll go through the answers afterwards. Or what you can do is just follow, continue following along the video, and uh, having to go at the questions as we go along. So let's crack on then. Let's uh, pause the video and give this question a go.
OK, so by drawing a tangent, find the acceleration of the train after 50 seconds. So what you do need to do first is grab yourself a ruler and draw yourself in a tangent that is a line, straight line that touches the graph at 50 seconds. And now we can work out the acceleration. So that would be the same as working out the gradient of this graph. Now, a little life hack for you is to just extend your line to a whole number of seconds or a, uh, a friendlier number of seconds here. You can see I've extended the line to 40 and I've extended the line to 60. And that makes it really easy to divide by 20 because I know the difference is 20. But on the, um, on the y-axis, it's going to go from 5 up to, it looks like that line stops at 38. So that would be a difference of 33. So therefore, the acceleration is difference in y divided by difference in x, which is 33 divided by 20. So let's grab a calculator, so 33 divided by 20, and that is 1.65 meters per second squared. There we are, that's the answer to part A. Let's now move on to part B. Same grid, same diagram, but this time we're working out the distance traveled in the first 60 seconds. Okay, so what we need to do here, the first thing we need to do is split our graph into six different trapeziums. It says six different regions, that's six different trapeziums. You want in between four and six, really. And now we need to work out the area of each trapezium. Well, the first one's actually a triangle. We can think of it still as a trapezium where the left-hand height is zero. So zero plus one divided by two times ten is five. Trapezium 2 is the height on the left hand side is 1, the height on the right hand side is 3. Then we'll divide that by 2 and then times by 10 seconds, that's the width of the bar. That's this dimension from here to here is 10, that's going in the 10 position here. Carry this on for trapezium 3, that's a height of 5 and 3, uh, divide by 2 times by 10 is 40. Trapezium 4 is between 5 and 10 and then times by 10. 10 to 22, and then 22 up to 50. Uh, so all of the trapeziums have areas of these values here, but to find the total distance traveled, we add the areas together and we get 660 meters. Now this is obviously an estimate, and if you've got something just a little bit different, then that's fine as well. If you've got 670, 650, uh, a little bit either way is acceptable. And we can see here this is overestimating the area because the lines on the trapezium are going over the actual distance curve or the velocity curve in this diagram. All right, let's move on to question two then. Pause the video and give this one a go. OK, so we're looking to find the acceleration of the car after 20 seconds. So let's draw in a tangent at 20 seconds. And what I could do, I don't need to use the whole line here. What I could do is just use this point here that intersects at 10, and then this point here that intersects at 30. And that gives me a nice divisor. Um, I need to go down to this point here and make this as accurate as you possibly can um, so that makes the difference in x 20. Now this is going to go from three seconds so no uh, is that three seconds that's four seconds actually each little box is 0 0.5 so that's four up to 12 so four up to 12 that's the difference of eight so the acceleration here is difference in y divided by difference in x that's going to be eight divided by 20 Grab the calculator, 8 divided by 20 is 0.4. So 0.4 meters per second squared is the answer to this question. Uh, but make sure that you remember that this graph is a downward sloping graph. So this difference here is actually a minus 8. So it's actually counted as minus 8 up here. So the acceleration is minus 0.4 meters per second squared. And let's move on to the second part of question 2. Pause the video and give this question a go. Okay, so once again in this question, we need to work out the area under the graph. That's the same as the distance. And we'll do that by breaking the graph down into separate trapeziums. 
So we've got six different trapeziums here. Well, one trapezium that's really a triangle, but we could say it has a trapezium with a height of zero on the right-hand side. So let's now have a go at this question. So left-hand height is 25, right-hand height is 13.5. Try and make this as accurate as possible. I divide that by 2 and times by the height. That's the width of the bar, actually, which is 10. Trapezium 2, that has a height on the left of 13.5 and 7.5 on the right. Divide that by 2 to get an average height and then times by the width. Trapezium 3, 7.5, 4.5, divide by 2 times by 10. Trapezium 4 is 4.5, 2.5, divide by 2 times by 10. 2.5 to 1 and then 1 to 0. Add all of these distances together or add all of these areas together and we get 415 meters. Um, yeah, there we are. So, and then we want to work out this over our underestimate. We can see here the lines of the trapezium are going over the curved line. So that's going to be an overestimate again because the trapeziums are going over the actual speed line or the velocity line. Okay, let's move on to question three. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so this question here is actually a distance time graph. So be careful, the question before was a speed time graph and we'd be working out acceleration there when we do a tangent. But when it's a distance time graph, it changes. And when we work out the speed, so when we work out a tangent, we actually work out the speed. So by drawing a tangent, find the speed of the bike at 30. Uh, so that would be half an hour. So that's why I've got the tangent at this point here. So. Let's draw in that little triangle to help us work out the gradient. So it looks like that's going to go from 22 on this axis up to 45 on this axis. That will give us a height of 23. And that's in one hour from 0 to 1. So for part A, that's going to be 23 divided by 1. That's 23 uh, kilometers per hour. Make sure you've got the units correct. It tells you on the axes what the units are, so make sure you use those units. And then for part B, find the speed after 90 minutes, so draw another tangent there, and then we'll work out the gradient. I've extended the line up to one hour and down to two hours. That just makes it easier to divide by one. And then on this axis here, it goes up to 18. So it's 18 divided by one, Difference in y divided by difference in x, that makes it 18 kilometers per hour. This one's going away from point zero, and this one's going back towards point zero, but still the speed is 18 kilometers per hour. Okay, let's move on to question four now. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so find the acceleration at 10 seconds. Well, at 10 seconds, the graph is flat. And when the graph is flat, that means the acceleration is zero meters per second. The speed is not increasing or decreasing at this point 10. It's just flat at 10. Yes, the, yes, the velocity is starting to go downwards. But at that specific point, the acceleration is zero. And then for 30, we'll draw a tangent in at 30, and lovely, we've extended the li those lines perfectly to 20 and 40. So let's now draw the line going down, and then the line coming across. Let's try and make this as accurate as possible. So it's going to go from 20 to 40, that's easy, that's 20. And then it's going to go up from 7 up to 32. So the difference between 32 and 7, let's just do a subtraction, is 25. So the acceleration is therefore going to, well, this is minus 25, isn't it? Because it's going downward. So acceleration is minus 25 divided by 20. And let's grab a calculator and do that calculation. Minus 25 divided by 20 is minus 1.25 meters per second. So that's the answer to that question there. And let's move on to part C and part D for question four. Pause the video and give this one a go.
Okay, so we'll divide it into six regions then using trapeziums. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This fifth one looks a bit funny, doesn't it? It's going to definitely be an overestimate of what that area is, but that's how it needs to be done. Okay, so let's now work out the areas of the trapezium. So trapezium one has a height of 40 and a height of 50. So on average, that'll be 45 times by the width of the bar, which is 10. That's 450 meters. Carrying on, 50 plus 40, that's again 450. 40 down to 20 this time, that's 300. 300 so 20 down to 11 this time, that's 155. 11 to 11, that's uh, 11, so 110. And then 11 back up to 20, that'll make it 155. So the total distance travelled then is 1,620 metres in 60 seconds. And if we want to work out the average speed of the car over the 60 seconds, then we just do total distance divided by total time, and then we get 1,620 divided by 60, which is 27 metres per second. Okay, that's the answer to question four. Let's move on to question five. Pause the video and give this question a go. Okay, so estimate the acceleration uh, in the first six seconds. Let's draw ourselves a tangent. And we've got our tangent going from 0 up to 14. So that would be a nice difference in x. That would be divided by 14. Now the difference in y, we'll have to use the uh, scale here very carefully. That's going from 3.6 on this. So each, um, each little box is 0 0.4 on this scale. Uh, 3.6 up to 14, so 14 take away 3.6 is uh, 10.4, so 10.4 divided by 14, and that gives us an answer of 0 0.74, so two significant figures, meters per second squared, and that's going upwards, so it is acceleration here. Right, let's move on to part B then, pause the video and give this one a go. OK, so by dividing the first 14 seconds into two sections, find the distance travelled in the first 14 seconds. So that's two sections of seven each. So one triangle, one trapezium. So the area of the triangle is going to be a height of 8.4. It goes up to one notch above eight, one little box above eight. Uh, and each little box here, if you break it down into five boxes of distance two, that's 0 0.4 for each box. That's 8.4 times by the base, which is 7 divided by 2, height times base divided by 2 is 29.4. The trapezium has a height on the left-hand side of 8.4 and 12 on the right-hand side, divided by 2 times by 7, that's 71.4. So for the first 14 seconds, the total distance travelled is 100.8 metres. And then for part C... Find the total distance travelled in twenty four in the whole twenty four seconds. Well, it makes sense to divide it into one rectangle and one triangle. Then, so that rectangle is going to have a base of four, height of twelve, so forty eight, and the triangle is going to have a base of twelve, so height of twelve, base of six, divided by two, that's thirty six, and then add all twenty four seconds together, and that will give you one hundred eighty four point eight meters. And then moving on to part D, find the average speed throughout the whole journey. Well, the whole journey is 184.8 metres. Divide that by 24 seconds. That's total distance divided by total time. And we get 7.7 .7 metres per second there. OK, let's move on to the final question then. Question six, pause the video and give this one a go. OK, calculate the acceleration at t equals 4 seconds. So you draw a tangent at 4 seconds, and then you work out what the gradient of that tra tra that tangent is. So it's going to go across, and then it's going to go down. So on the units here, it's going to be 5 down to 2. So that's a difference in x of 3. 
So from here to here, that's a difference of 3, divided by 3. And then the difference in y is going to be, well, that's 10 boxes. Uh, that would be 0 0.2 per box. So that's going to be 5.6. 5.6 down to here. And then up to here is going to be 9 points. 9.4, 9.4, so 9.4 up to here. So 9.4, what's the difference between those two numbers? 9.4 take away 5.6, and that gives me 3.8. So 3.8 divided by 3, and that is 1.27 meters per second squared. And it's going upwards, so it is acceleration. And moving on to part B, by dividing the graph into suitable intervals, find the distance travelled, pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, so we have 10 seconds here, so it'd be suitable to divide this graph into five separate sections, a section of two seconds each. So in this case, it's going to be a triangle first, or a trapezium with a height of zero on the left-hand side. Uh, so that's up to 4.6 divided by 2 times by 2, 2.3. Trapezium 2 on the left-hand side is a height of 4.6 on the right -hand side of 8. Uh, divide that by 2 because that's an average, and then times by 2 seconds. So this 2-second gap here corresponds to this 2 that we're multiplying by here. Uh, trapezium 3 is 8, point, so 8 to 9.6, trapezium 4 is from 9.6 to 9.4, and trapezium 5 is from 9.4 down to 8, and add all of those answers together and you get 69.1. And there we are, that's all the questions that we're going to go through in this section, so there we are, very well done if you followed that all the way through, and hopefully you found it useful, and thanks for watching.